And so, but even that's changed. Well, I mean, I got eastbound and down and heralded Kumar uh, from an audition I sent in uh, from my laptop. And so I'm like, well, why am I here? And then I go, all right, the market's pretty good. Let me just put my house on the market. I started fixing it. I started fixing my house up thinking, well, if I don't sell it, I'll enjoy this. You know what I mean? So I started fixing things up, uh, doing some construction, making the kitchen nicer. And I go like, all right, I'm going to put it on the market. And if it, if I get the price I want, then that's going to be the last sign that I need and I'm, I'm bouncing. And it was like that. It sold so fast for what it, oh. the price I wanted. I was like, oh, man, now i got to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. Hey, everybody. It's your host, Darren Carter, the party starter. Today, I'm very excited to have a good friend, host of Country-ish Podcast, Mr. John Reap. What up, Darren? How's it going, buddy? Cartar? <laughs> Good to see you, man. Fellow Ginger, you and I have like had this connection. Whenever we see each other, it's like, hey, another redhead, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's like seeing uh, just another brother from another mother, man. I mean, there's not a, <laughs> there's not a whole lot of us. I think uh, I think there's a statistic like, oh, hey, what color are your eyes real quick? Oh, blue. Blue. Okay. So did you know the stats on this? It's like we're the rarest of the rare, like a blue eyed ginger. Although it doesn't seem that rare to me because I think most <laughs> yeah. gingers have blue eyes, but they're saying like a blue eyed ginger is the rarest one, but whatever. Wow. That's us, dude. Two unicorns, one spot. <laughs> <laughs> I know, although I've kind of left the pack, you know, I, uh, yeah, I, I sort of like, once I started shaving it, I was like, mm, you know, I have a joke for that. Cause, uh, at the end of my shows, you know, um, cause I talk about being a ginger sometimes. And then a guy will come up to me, a, a fellow redhead will come up and go, Hey man, uh, I love what you talk about up there. I feel your pain, huh? And I'm look, but he's a bald guy. I'm like, no, right. no. Yeah. Um, I said, you're no longer a ginger. You are a bald guy. You have transitioned to a bald guy. You're a trans ginger. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I, I, look, yeah. I, mine's about to go, man. I've got, I'm just growing this part out, but like back here, it's it's starting to go back here, man. So yeah. I'm just giving it one last hurrah. Have you been uh, just? I guess it's easy for you during this quarantine. You can just shave your own head, huh? Dude, absolutely, man. It's like it it's uh you know it's great because I I guess I like started shaving it maybe two and a half years ago, and uh, it was funny because I was really trying not to let it go. I was like I would I would just get haircuts every three weeks and then every two weeks and then it got down to every week and because what happens is the sides grow faster yeah. and you start getting that larry david look from curb your enthusiasm <laughs> and, right. and with redheads it kind of looks like bozo right <laughs> dude right. you want to get like red hair and a sunburn nose it's like <laughs> that's not the look you want you know no. so so yeah i uh, i started i i actually i remember the the day i got the electric razor I went down to Walmart, got one of the wall uh, razors, electric razor, plugged it into the wall, put the guard on number one because I was afraid, you know. So there was still a guard, and I just kind of did the sides. And then I, I was like, I kind of like it. I mean, it was it was a little bit – in my mind, it was uh, a dramatic change, but, you know, sure. some people didn't even notice really. Right. Um, my wife did. And then, uh, and then I said, you know, one day I just took the guard off and I started going no guard because it doesn't make it bald like a blade right. in, sh in shaving. But it, and once you do that, you do, I do it every, you know, three days, sometimes every during the quarantine, maybe every five days. But it's like, I don't know, man. It's like, it's, it's so big. It's like, I mean, that's my, my brother is a year and a half younger than me. He, he yeah. was a blonde headed guy, but he lost his hair early, like probably around 31 or something, 30. Mm -hmm. And, and he was fighting it. It's like, yeah. am, am I going to do the sides? Not fighting it like comb over, but like leaving it here. I'm like, I, you yeah. might as well take it all off. And so now he's a he's a bald guy, but like, but he has a, a little bit of a beard. Sometimes I think, yeah, uh, a, a bald guy with a beard is a great look. Have you ever tried growing out a beard? I haven't done the beard thing. Like this is a uh, you know sometimes I'll shave and 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 like like I, I it's funny I I very rarely started sh like completely shaved once i shaved this because i was like well have a little stubble give yourself some color but you know what man i just had another birthday and uh it's like that white is coming in you oh, know yeah the white comes in and yeah it's like yeah it's uh 
it's interesting, right? Like, I think that's what happens with redheads too. The, it goes from bright red to kind of a blonde, you know, we sort of, we transition into like normal society. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. It sucks. You, I mean, I, did, I know, you know, it's not just the hair, the hair part. I don't mind. I've never really minded the color of my hair. It's more yeah. of like, it's weird that it's, it's got crazy waves in it and I can't really style it any one way. And, and it's the skin part, you know, just yeah. the burning yeah. it's, it's the skin yeah. part. I, I wish I could change, you know? Yeah, I went to the beach yesterday or two days ago with my wife and son. Now, my wife, she's olive skin. She gets t- this great tan. She's a Armenian, you know, second generation Armenian. She grew up on a farm, so she loves the outdoors. The, you know, loves all that stuff and and you know Mediterranean area. And so it's funny. She's like, let's go to the beach. And and my son loves the beach, but he's more like me. Like you know, he's got a he's got a, I don't. I don't I've seen I mean, your son. Now, but he, he's he's yeah. uh, he's fair skin, but it has b- a dark hair, right? His dark hair, yeah. But he, but we, I, I got to, I tell her, you, you know, we, we got him. Sunscreen is very important, you know. So so now he wears like this big flappy hat in the front, and then it has like the the looks like a <laughs> looks like a looks like a cloth mullet. Really, is what it looks yeah, like. I've, you know? <laughs> I've seen those hats. Those are kind of big in the eighties for a second. A lot of skater <laughs> yeah. guys would. It was like a hat. With the little mullet in the back, exact not not the hair, but the cloth. You're right. It's like two little flaps, right? Yep, or, yep. Or is it just one flap? Because I it's, I think that was big in the '80s, like a oh, painter's yeah. hat. It was like a painter's hat, like real yep. thin, and then it had the flap on it. I remember that, like the skater guys did that. Oh, you're right. Yeah, they did do that, huh? I forget. No, this is just one giant flap. I got it at the military store. They, uh, you know, the oh, hat that I, I that I found perfect for me is just I just go with the straw hat, man. Just the big straw hat. It's like living under a tree. Yeah. You know, it's like your own personal tree. And, and that's uh, what I have. Is that what you do? Yeah. Do you, uh, and then so, sometimes I was like, I don't want every picture to be that hat. So then I started rocking <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Every picture it's like, I'm like, eh, you know, yeah. so, uh, so then well, I started, I, I, I yeah. just moved back to, uh, Hickory not long ago, Hickory, North Carolina. And my parents, uh, they have a pool in their backyard. So, now I'm out, I'm out outdoors a lot working in the yard doing pool stuff. And I do wear that straw hat because it is the most efficient one. Yes. Oh, that's a good one, buddy. That's, that's the one I go with. Right yeah. There. Look at that. Um, if you'll notice, I, like I put that, I put the bandana and then I put that because the bandana, even, even more like the, there's little, I don't want any of that sun to get through. So I do that. Yeah. <laughs> I like the old samurai looking ones, you know, the ones oh, that maybe yeah. I'm working out in a rice field or something. It's just like straight down. Those are very efficient. Oh, I got to show you this, man. Someone sent this to me. This is a picture of me in high school, bright red hair. Look at this. I'm going to post this on my Instagram. If you guys are listening, check this out. Oh, it's Darren Carter. <laughs> Darren Carter, 16 years old. Oh, boy. Yes, of course you're going to be a comedian. Of course. Yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, man. See, it's so funny. Like, I remember being, like, 16, 17, and, and uh, I remember I'd be, you know, like, at church or something, and some old guy would be like, you know, like what you said. They were like, I used to have hair as red as yours. And I, in my mind, I couldn't even picture it. To me, they didn't even look like a redhead, but... As you get older, you're like, oh, I could see, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember the, yeah. Old, old people love red hair. They do. Uh, they I do. don't understand why they do because mm. I remember as a kid, you got picked on by your own peers, people in your <laughs> yeah. own age group. But old people are like, oh, he just has the beautiful, look at his beautiful red hair. You want to touch it? Yeah. You're like this. I'm yeah. like, yeah. why well, get off me, weirdo? <laughs> I know that was some of my earlier jokes back in the day. I remember I was, you know, 22 years old or whatever. I'd be like, how come none of the girl, it's always like their grandmas are like, I gotta, yeah, my <laughs> granddaughter would love you. And then, then the granddaughter was like, no, man, I'm, I like, the, <laughs> exactly. I like those guys look, they look like the thunder from down under over there, you know, with the right. six pack abs and the, you know, the tropical tan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I feel your pain, buddy. You know, wait, they, uh, so it's great, man. So I, the last time you did the pod, by the way, if you guys are listening, John Reap did one of my earlier podcasts, probably in the, the first 20, somewhere in there. And it was great, man, because I, that was where I really felt like I was getting my stride. Like, okay, I've got my equipment. I'm not afraid to like, because in the beginning, anytime you start something, especially with technology, you know, you're like, 
you, you're insecure. You're like, how am I going to record it? Is it going <clears> to, <throat> is, is it going to stop recording? Is it not going to upload to the internet? Is it all that stuff? Right. Excuse me. <clears throat> and I remember, right. you know, you, you, you showed me what light to use. You showed me some of the different stuff. And I remember going to your, at that time, uh, your awesome home, man. You lived right there in Studio City. It was right. I remember if you looked out the window, didn't you see it like, like maybe where some things were filmed? Like right yes. outside. Yeah. Yeah. I lived in Studio City. I lived in a, a town home uh, right behind CBS Radford. And so they filmed all kinds of sitcoms, TV shows, movies over there. Um, in fact, I mean, it's been there forever, but from my kitchen window, um, behind it, like what separates CBS Radford and my town home was the LA river. Um, yep. so, you know, you'd look out the window, you'd see the river and on the other side of that, you could see where they used to shoot Gilligan's Island. Um, and then yeah. on the other side is, uh, where they used to shoot a sitcom that I was on, which is why I bought the, the place to begin with, which is stupid. And I tell people all the time, Hey, if you ever, ever want to get a sitcom canceled all you have to do is buy a, ca a condo within walking distance <laughs> i'll rip it right off the screen for you yeah yeah i mean it sounds like a great i mean that must have been heaven though and, the, and did you ever live in the in the townhouse while going to the set or did those never cross yes, over it happened for like five episodes <laughs> Wow! and i was like so the first season i, did, I was in an apartment i still had i lived yeah. in an apartment in glendale Oh and yeah, I lived in Glendale for about a year uh, with a buddy of mine named Jason, and it it was great. It was clean. It was nice, um, but it was just a little far away. Yeah. And then I remember, as soon as I get a second season of this sitcom, I'm getting a place. In fact, when I went to go pay rent one time to the landlord of the of the apartment in Glendale, he goes, "Why are you still here? You're on a sitcom." And I'm like, "Yeah, good good point." And so I'm like, like "It's okay. a sign." It's a yeah, sign. It's a, it's a sign. <laughs> yeah. and Everyone so, uh, sees it but me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, well, if the landlord's telling me to get out, all right, maybe yeah. I should get. So I went and bought a place, and then it was like five, <sighs> I don't know, maybe like six months later, they canceled it. I'm like, shit. Um, but then, luckily, um, uh, Last Comic Standing happened, and I, uh, that helped oh, yeah. me keep it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When, uh, you know, there yeah, was a came there, to my house and we, we, we recorded, uh, your, one of your first episodes at my place in studio city. And, uh, it was great, man. We talked for like over an hour. I think that, that would have been, uh, probably a little over two years ago, I think. Yes. Maybe three. Yep. It, it was, it, no, it was about two years ago. And I remember what was a little interesting is, is, uh, I remember just thinking like, this is awesome. And then I was like, I can't wait to do, cause I, I was like, no, I was thinking number one, he's a, John's a great guest. Number two, it's, it's, you know, I live in Burbank. This is, I'm like, this is, you know, and I, I, I was like, oh man, I gotta start hanging out with John more. You know, when you start clicking with people or you're like, man, I gotta make an effort because usually you see somebody, you know, we'd always run into each other, you know, different comedians, you know, how you, you go to the improv bar, you'd see each other and, and you're like, oh man, you know, but we just kind of keep seeing each other. And then I thought this podcast is great because now I can make appointments with people. We can actually connect and then go grab a bite afterwards. I remember, <laughs> I remember driving home going, yes, you know, I figured out the podcast thing. Like I, I, I'm, I'm able to like really do this. Um, and then I remember you go, oh, Darren, you go, I get a fanny pack. I, I carried the fanny pack and I'm able to go <laughs> mobile, go on the street. I'm like, this is great. Like it just opened up a whole new world. I actually uh, took a picture and I go, hey, I got my fanny pack. Right, you know? right, right. You know, like, I got like mine I'm be... sitting right behind me over here still. I haven't it, used it in a minute, but it's yeah. just because you can't go anywhere. Nothing's open. But <laughs> right, once, yeah. The, so now, yeah, now, now it's like man on the home. yeah, men on the street be kind of weird during a quarantine. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, get away from me! Get away from me! You're like disinfecting the mic. Closer <laughs> oh, from six feet away, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't even like watching it on TV, like the like yeah. uh, the, the real news. Like when they're interviewing people on the street, they're like so far apart. I'm like, this is just weird. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. funny, man. They. Uh, it's funny because. Uh, um, oh okay, well. So before I get into that, I was going to say that I remember like that. It must have been. I swear, I, I somehow saw you posted like maybe like a month later that you. You're like, hey, I sold my place. I'm heading, and I'm like, what? Like, I didn't even know, man. Like, yeah. I mean, it was, 
Yeah. It was cool. Now, how, did, so, how did that transpire? What was uh, like, well, like, there's a lot going on in a person's mind when they decide to, to pick up and leave Los Angeles. But I got to say like more people are doing it in the last couple of months than have, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, but so what transpired, what in your mind made you think like, I'm going to do this? It was a combination of things. Number one, uh, I was out there 18 years. I had a, a decent career, you know, uh, it's always mm -hmm. had ups and downs. Uh, but the last probably five years, um, I started thinking, wow, I, I really do miss my family a lot. Yeah. And I'm like, I've missed out on so much, even though I have a decent career and, and everything's going great that, that way. I mean, I'd come home and visit my family and friends and they'd be talking about something that happened last weekend and I'm just out of the story. And I'm like, I don't even know what's going on. And there's so much has changed, not just my life, but their lives. And I'm not, yeah. I'm not a part of it anymore. And I'm getting older and I'm like, all right. So all that's going through my head. Um, what also is going through my head is how much the industry's changed. Um, if, if I'm just going to be a stand up, I could live anywhere. Um, I've already got my foot in the door. People, clubs already know who I am. I have a manager. I have an agent. It's not like I need to be in LA, um, unless I want to get parts, you know, acting parts. Um, and so, but even that's changed. Well, I mean, I got Eastbound and Down and Harold and Kumar, uh, from an audition I sent in, uh, from my laptop. And so I'm like, well, why am I here? And then I go, all right, the market's pretty good. Let me just put my house on the market. I started fixing it. I started fixing my house up thinking, well, if I don't sell it, I'll enjoy this. You know what I mean? So I started fixing things up, uh, doing some construction, making the kitchen nicer. And I go like, all right, I'm going to put it on the market. And if it, if I get the price I want, then that's going to be the last sign that I need and I'm, I'm bouncing. And it was like that. It sold so fast. For what it, oh. the price I wanted, I was like, "Oh man, now I gotta leave." <laughs> <laughs> did it, did like, it make okay. you? Did was there a little part of you that thought, "Man, I should have probably asked just a little bit more money," or you're just like, "Okay, it's I'm happy it's gone." Like, I, uh, I mean, I could have played that game, but at the end of the day, that I mean, the market it's so volatile, and it was it was on an uptick. And I thought, well, I don't want to play that game and, and, then, and then get nothing out of this. So I ended up making, m making money off of it. And I was like, oh, this will be great. I'll, my dad said, I'll fly out there. I flew my dad out to Los Angeles. We packed all of my yeah, – I, I donated a lot of my stuff. I donated it to Goodwill or uh, Habitat for Humanity. And then the, what I didn't donate, I put up in the back of a U-Haul. And my dad drove it all the way across the country. We made – I had an old Mercury Mountaineer. It's like a Ford Bronco. But in the back of that, we just made a bed. And we said to each other, well, let's see how far we can go without getting a hotel room. Because that's across the country. California, North Carolina. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I, I remember watching some of this, if I'm not mistaken. Did you put it on Instagram at the time or something? I, I feel like I was following the story a little bit. It was pretty interesting. Yeah, part of me didn't want to tell everybody that I was leaving because I still wanted to give the illusion yeah, to yeah. managers and agents and other comedians that, oh, yeah, John, he's still in L.A. He's an L.A. guy. I could call him up anytime. Um, and if I'm not there, I could just say, oh, well, I'm on the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I remember you – I do remember you giving little hints. Like you're like, I'm going to be going back and forth more, and I'm going to – I really want to spend time with my parents. And so I was thinking like what you said. Like I was like, oh, yeah, he'll be – you know, but then it was just like, all right, road trip. Come on, dad. We're not sleeping. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, yeah. And we did. We, we, <laughs> awesome. we went all the way across the country without getting a hotel room. We just stopped to get gas and food and use the bathroom. And we were, we made it back in like 36 hours or something. <laughs> and, and, wow. Uh, that's awesome. Eastbound and down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, li that's literally what it was. Uh, we were going yeah. east and uh, we, um, I got home and, you know, my, 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 my idea was, well, now that I've sold my house, I really want to get that lake house. I've always been sort of fantasizing about, it. we got a nice lake here in Hickory called Lake Hickory. And, uh, I thought, well, let me get a house on Lake Hickory. And then, uh, every two months I'll go back to LA for pilot season and I'll still do the road, but I'll just fly to Charlotte, which is only 45 minutes from here. Yeah. And I thought that's great because the LA airport was 45 minutes from my house anyway in studio city. <laughs> Yeah. So nothing's really changed. I'm saving more money and I come home. I got that plan going. I get a realtor. I'm looking at houses and then my dad has a stroke. I'm like, God, I'm. And so right on Thanksgiving day, he has a stroke. 
And uh, I go, well, I think I'm just going to park it here with mom for a while and ride this thing out and see what happens. He's alive. He's at a yep. skilled nursing facility. Uh, we can't visit him right now because of uh, the c- corona. But uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking care of him, I'm taking care of mom. Yeah. Mom just had a eyeball surgery on, she has cataracts and glaucoma. She just had that surgery. So I'm driving her to appointments. I've turned into a, uh, an elder care Uber driver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey man, that's, that's a good thing. You know what? It's uh, my, my in-laws rest in peace. My father-in-law lived to be 90 and you know, people don't understand. Sometimes they would be like, they would be like, um, they understand that, you know, like, like, uh, sometimes, you know, they have to be in a facility because what happened is he, you know, he was a farmer his whole life. So he really wanted, imagine if we could just do comedy whenever we wanted to, like, because we love it so much. So with the farmer, I mean, he, he would love to like go out the front door and then there's like everything he wants to work on. And what mm-hmm. happens is, you know, they, they fall down. You got to call the paramedic. They fall down. You got to call the ambulance. They fall. I mean, and, and, and it got to the point where they were like, you know, we, we, and this is like pretty often you got to, we've got to figure something. So we figured something out. And at that time we were really lucky that uh, it wasn't too far from the home. And, and mm-hmm. uh, there was only a few other people there and we would visit him, but it, but it wasn't during COVID. So, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah well, we so. didn't have a choice, really have a choice either. He, he suffered like a lot of like a massive stroke. He has brain damage. <clears throat> uh, he can't move his left side at all. And we've had him at different mm-hmm. places. We, we tried rehab. We tried um, s- the skilled places. We've done all the, you know, physical therapy, the speech therapy, the occupational therapy, and um, at the end of the day, my mother, who has osteoporosis and can't yep. see, uh, can't physically get him in and out of bed. So exactly, that's what happens. It's they like, have no choice, and know. I can't. They can't rely on me because I'm, you know, when I'm touring, yeah. I'm not here. And my brother, he can't really rely on him because he has a nine to five job. So he needs twenty four hour care. I love uh, how you call him popsicle. That's cute, man. Yeah, hey, popsicle. popsicle. <laughs> yeah, my yeah, son that calls just happened, me. Yeah, that just oh, yeah? Or- organically one day. Um, because I, at the end of my comedy, you know, I always just say bicycle. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then one day I said, uh, All right, bye, pops. He goes, Bicycle. I said, Bye, popsicle. Said, popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> and it just stuck. Hey, did you? Uh, and this is just a crazy question. I, I used to hear a, a, a DJ back in the 80s when he would, he would sometimes go, bicycle what did oh. you ever hear a dj do that or back in the day no or? i'll tell you where it came from uh my first roommate in los angeles a guy named joe stevens from texas um i got it from him and it's funny how i and i never heard him say it to this one time but it mm. stuck out in my head i go oh that's funny but he <laughs> uh he got mad at jeff richards one time because that, <laughs> yeah. i let i let jeff richards stay in my apartment while i was on the road and uh you know, I had a roommate and, and, yeah. and uh, Joe was cool with it. He's like, Oh, that's fine. Uh, I'd love to meet Jeff Richards cause he was on Saturday night live and I'd like to pick his brain and, and all that stuff. And Jeff came in there and you know, he was loud. He came in at three in the morning and, and just was just messing up the place. And, and Joe had had enough. And, um, <laughs> so Joe just called him up cause they, they were ships passing in the night. He never actually saw each other and just heard each other. So, <laughs> Joe called him on this phone and said, he left this horrible voicemail. I was like, listen here, you son of a, he just cussed up. He cussed out Jeff for like 45 seconds in in this voicemail. And at the very end of it, he goes, all right, that's enough. I want you out of here by tomorrow. Bicycle. (laughs) I'm like, what an odd thing. Like he just spent 45 seconds cussing him out. And then at the very last thing, he got cute. With his yeah. bye. All right, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. like, you take care now. Okay, bicycle. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it made me laugh. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to start saying bicycle from now on because I love it. That's yeah, awesome. but I, I never heard the DJ. Maybe he got it from the DJ. I don't know. No, I just – it was one of those guys. He – he uh, I forget his name. I was hoping you – you. it was – I remember it was a father and son team. Uh, they traveled the country. I know like he was like the morning programmer or whatever. And he used to do this whole thing where he'd be like, uh, look at poo. I'm through. Look out streets. My feet are about to hit you. And then, if, you know, you know, those, that old like pattern, how some of those uh, yeah. DJs would be. And, 
And uh, I remember at that age, man, you know, I, cause I worked in radio for a couple of years. I was super excited. You know, I grew up in a pretty strict household, you know, uh, my dad was a Southern Baptist deacon and oh, wow. uh you know, the whole, you know, the sort of the vibe was kid children are to be seen and not heard. So when I would be out of the house, I was like, it was like, that's when I would be like, you know, like, that's, you know, that's where, you know, but at home I would, you know, try not to do that. So I remember when, you know, going into that, when I worked at the station, I worked in the telemarketing part and behind the scenes. But when I got to, I remember one day they had this, this sort of unofficial meeting, like they were all in the the DJ's like office, you know, and it was the the main program director, his son, and a few of the other staff. And they were like, you got to meet this guy. And that's when I went in and I was like, boom, 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 Kermit the Frog, and I'm covered him. You know, I was just uh, rapping. And I think just, they, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. You froze for just a second, but then you're oh, back. But I was like beatboxing, doing my voices and, and just like, you know, just really, you know, imagine a 19 year old kid that's just hyped up. That's, you know, and, yeah. uh, and I remember, I'll never forget. They were like, they were like, he must be on something. Like they thought I was like, you know, on something. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's funny, but like, like as you get older, you start to mellow. And, you know, it's, it's, it, 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 it's one of those things. I, I, I was watching one of your, um, your episodes and mm-hmm. I thought, I don't know if it's just a maturity level or a confidence level, or maybe it's where you're located now. But I, I definitely, it, it seems like you're a lot more mellow. And and that's a good thing. Have you noticed that? Has anyone else noticed that? Or have you found that about uh, yourself? Yeah, I guess it's, it, it, it might be definitely I'm comfortable because the guys on my podcast are old, old school friends. I've known them my whole life. Wow. And so I am more, uh, maybe a little bit more comfortable around them. And I think also just a podcast in general, you know, it's it's a time for you to just chill out and have a conversation and not try to get a laugh every three seconds. <laughs> So it, I think just by nature of a podcast, you're a little bit more mellow. Um, but yeah, I think it's a combination of those. Um, I, even though still to this day at the very beginning of it, I feel like I get, I get all like amped up. I'm like, all right, here we go. You know, I get like, <laughs> just going. which is okay. It's yeah, okay. And, that, but and then I, my yeah. friends are just staring at me like, what? Calm down. <laughs> man. What's wrong with you? Yeah. yeah. It's like, uh, it'd be like this. You're like, it's like a nervous energy, you know, here, I'll do an imitation of what it would be like. All right, you guys ready to start recording? All right, here we go. Hey, everybody, it's Darren Carter, the party star. <laughs> They're like, dude, what, what are you on, bro? Yeah, what just happened? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I've but, seen uh, DJs to be like that before because, you know, we've done morning radio many times as touring comedians. You have to go in sometimes and do radio at the local uh, yeah. station, whatever town you're in. And uh, I've seen this, I've seen guys do that where it's like, hey, John, thanks for coming in so early. Um, we're just going to do maybe 10 minutes probably, um, just the greatest hits. Uh, I'll set you up for some jokes, and then uh, we'll get out of here, okay? I'm like, oh, cool. He's like, <laughs> he's like, Okay, three, two. Hey, we're back, everybody. I'm, I'm, you know, it's like, oh, what just happened here? Um, but I think podcasts can be different, you know, because it's stretched out time and people can relax and have a conversation. And it's really, good, I really, man. I really, I'm really loving it. I mean, the podcast is sort of what's keeping me sane now that we can't go on the road. Um, yeah. And it's given me something to do and put my creative uh, energy into. And uh, I'm really fortunate. Um, yeah, because it's me and some of my best friends and we're just talking, but we have segments and I love my segments. Yeah. I was wondering, I was going to ask you about that. Well, um, did you, uh, like, uh, are they, uh, what are your different segments? Like how many, yeah. cause some of them are called like goodwill hunting. Yeah. And, uh, I got a, so I got a buddy named Mark hunt and, um, he's, he's newly divorced and he's kind of down on his luck and doesn't make a whole lot of money. And so he does shop at a goodwill. Like not ironically, but because it's cheaper. Yeah, um, yeah. You know how like hipsters like to go there and ironically wear a Goodyear hat, whereas I know people who work at a Goodyear wear a Goodyear hat. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So he goes there because it's the best value for him. But anyway, I thought, well, his last name's Hunt. He goes to a Goodwill. Why don't we come up with a segment called Goodwill Hunting? And what we'll do is we'll separately go to a Goodwill, buy a gift for each other for five dollars or less. 
and exchange it on the show, but it has to have meaning behind it. It, it needs to make sense. Yeah. Um, so like he was at a Goodwill and he found, he found this thing for me and he gave it to me. Um, and it, it just says the world's greatest guy. Oh, yeah, and it's just like, <laughs> this dude doesn't look like me, but he thinks I'm a great guy. But the, the guy is sort of like picking his ass a little bit. And I, I do that sometimes. So, He's got his hand back there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. a segment. Um, but also I got to tell you this, I'm, I'm really proud of this. Okay. So I came home. Um, my buddy, Mark Hunt, he's a good looking dude. And now he's divorced. He's single. He's trying to get back out there. And every time we go out somewhere in Hickory, uh, people recognize me. Uh, they'll go, Oh, Hey John, 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 John. And I was like, well, I, I need to do something to help out Mark because he's the one I've got a girlfriend. He, he's the one looking for girls. Oh, that's so cool. Thought, you got a girlfriend out there. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought, all right, well, let me help. How can I be a good wingman to my friend, Mark Hunt? Well, who is a good looking dude. And someone said to him one time, you kind of look like John Stamos. This dude looks like he could be related to John Stamos. This is not a joke. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, all right, well, let's go with that. And I'm going to start telling people that you are his brother. That you are John Stamos's, but your your name is Marcus Stamos. And <laughs> yeah. I made I made business cards. I went. I took headshots of him. And <laughs> I put up a business card. That's it's, cool. It says Marcus Stamos, actor, producer, John Stamos's brother. That's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> and so now when we go out and people come up to me and they're trying to notice me to deflect, I go, "Well, thank you, but do you know who that guy is?" That's John Stamos's brother, and I got his business card, and then I'll hand it to him. They'll be like, "Oh my god, oh I see it!" And so <laughs> we we created a website and everything. We photoshopped his head on other celebrities that was that have been with John Stamos on red carpet. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> so that's a, that's like an ongoing joke. I pretend to have uh, John Stamos's brother on my podcast. Hey, you know who's who's uh, friends with John Stamos is uh, Mike Young. Mike Young's put him in a couple of movies. Oh. In fact, John Stamos, uh, actually, I think he might have hosted at the Laugh Factory four or five months ago. So I, I don't think there's that far. I mean, it's pretty no. close. Something could happen with this. It really could. I, I, I hope you it know? does. I know now that I live in Hickory, it's going to be uh, harder to do. But uh, through Instagram, um, he has liked a couple of our posts. Like, so... <laughs> He hasn't said anything, but he's liked him. So I think someone's either let him know. I'll, I'll, yeah. I would love to have him on the podcast somehow. That would be great. Hey, did you know that I think, I think I'm right about this, that he's, he sits in with the Beach Boys every now and then. and, and plays it, drums. <laughs> yeah. My wife yeah. and I and some, we went to a Beach Boys concert, and, and then they were like, John Stamos. And we're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, think, I think he played the Super Bowl uh, at halftime show. With the Beach Boys, they played Aruba, Jamaica. Oh, I want to take you down to Kokomo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's crazy, right? I mean, the guys, you can't that be that good looking and, and play the drums. I know. You know what's wild is like, imagine that like you, you become so popular that you just sit in with like the doors or somebody, like any classic, <laughs> you know, you know, hey, I went to go see Led Zeppelin and I saw John Reap and Darren Carter up there. Like, yeah. <laughs> 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 well we all I, I gotta tell you this real quick too we yeah. also um uh before the pandemic uh i would go to this place called the iron thunder that's where i met my girlfriend it's like a biker bar but it's not it's not intimidating it's not like a mean biker bar it's just a bunch yeah. of odd characters go there and i like <laughs> odd characters you know and so i also like karaoke and they do karaoke and uh i met this guy singing uh he was singing a Cinderella song and he looks like, I mean, he's, he's messed up. Like he's, he's on something or he's drinking a lot. He's got a shady past. Poor guy lives in a trailer, but uh, he, he's kind of a good looking dude as well, but he looks like he could be related to Bon Jovi. So I started calling him Ron Bon Jovi and, uh, and I had him uh, do one of the theme songs to uh, one of our uh, segments called uh, the stream team where we, we, we watch movies that are only streaming. So you don't have to go Dude, to the I theater. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, all right, here's what you should watch. And then come back to the podcast and we'll talk about it. 
Uh, we just watched Every Which Way But Loose with Clint Eastwood. Remember that one with the Clyde I the do. Monkey? I do. I actually remember seeing that in a in a. I want to say we saw that in a drive-in theater when I was a really little kid. And yeah. uh, I, for me, I don't really remember the movie, but I, I remember when I was a kid, I thought it was cool that there was an orangutan. But I do remember <laughs> the theme. The theme song was pretty catchy, right? Kenny Loggins. Kenny Loggins sang uh, the theme song. That was great. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, Clyde was the best part of the movie. The, that's the mm. orangutan. Uh, and the fight. I mean, this was before – this movie was shot in 1979. It was yeah. before uh, every fight scene had kung fu or karate in it. You know, now, yeah, anytime yeah. there's a fight scene, everyone's a black belt. Right. Uh, but back then, these are just straight-up brawls and haymakers. And, you know, it's like good <laughs> boxing. Uh, yeah. not, no kicks. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. They uh, – Clint Eastwood, man. They um. Oh, when you first went back to back home, I remember you put like the uh, the the message out. You're like, hey, I want to start shooting some stuff here. If there's anybody has a barn or anybody has a studio, any let's let's do some. I want to do a show right here. Did did that ever transpire, or did that move over to what you're doing now with the podcast? Uh, a little bit of both. It did transpire. We shot the pilot. It's called Hickory Live. Mm. We shot it in a barbecue restaurant. Um, that is also a barn and yeah. they have um, live music. They have clogging uh, on the weekends. And I came out, uh, we, we sold tickets. We had a, an audience there. I came out, I did a monologue. We have, I had a sidekick named Tim Sherrill. It's like this big redneck guy in overalls. And he sat at a recliner and <clears throat> ate barbecue and had a, we had an Apple one <laughs> computer in front of him and he would pretend to check Facebook live messages. <laughs> Uh, and then That's we had awesome. uh, Brad Paisley Skyped in. Whoa. We had, yeah. We had uh, the mayor of Hickory come on. I had one of my old teachers. We had Ron Bon Jovi sing a karaoke song. And it was great. There's a, if you go to hickorylifeshow.com, you can see the sizzle reel, the pilot of it. And um, all things comedy, the same people I do the podcast with, um, they, have a, they signed a shopping agreement. And uh, right before – this COVID took off. Mm. I had all these meetings set up to shop the pilot around. And there are, there are some people interested in it. Um, but right now nothing's happening. So it's still in limbo. It's still available. I'm hoping when this blows over, I can get yeah. back out there and take some meetings and sell it. But until then I've been doing the podcast. Dude, God bless you, man. And, and uh, I looked on YouTube. How many episodes are on YouTube now of your, of your podcast? Uh, we've done full, uh, so a full episode is probably an hour and a half. Um, but we chop it up into like eight to 10 minute segments. Yeah. So whatever, I mean, cause that's how people watch stuff on YouTube. Right, right. They, don't, they don't, they don't have the attention span to watch a two hour thing. So, and then plus there's a whole algorithm, uh, philosophy yeah. behind it. So they like that YouTube likes things in about eight to 10 minute chunks. And so that's another reason why we have segments because, oh, we just have a segment and just call it that. So I, I don't I don't even know at this point. There's tons of uh, – there's a whole playlist called Country-ish Playlist where you can check out the 10-minute segments. Oh, and, and how about the full segments? Do you, are you full, in the uh, – Full episode. We're on episode 27 right now. Nice. And yeah. before that, you had other podcasts. Do, do you still – do you st do you still do those? Are those a thing you, yeah, you keep going? So basically, or? Yeah, it's the same one. We just changed the name. Um, mm. All Things Comedy partnered with uh, Wondery, which is another um, podcast uh, entity. And so they said, all right, we're making a big switch. We're going to try and get cross promotion going. We're going to try and get everybody ad revenue. Yeah. Um, and if you're thinking about changing anything, now's the time to change it. I never really like fried the name. Um, and that was me and Sarah Tiana. Like we started yeah. that one together. Yeah. And, uh, once I moved away and she got busy doing other stuff, I thought, let's just change the name and make a clean, a clean sweep. But yeah. it's the same, same network, same feed as fried, but we just changed the name. That's cool. And, uh, do you, do you still podcast with, you're not, you guys aren't, you're not podcasting with her right now or no? No, I mean, it's just whoever I can get to zoom in. Yeah, um, I think she had a I, baby uh, also. Yeah, 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 she had a baby. She was working on David Spade's uh, Lights Out show on Comedy Central. Yeah. She was a writer, um, and she was doing another podcast with Rob Rob Riggle. I think it was on Sirius XM, um, and then that one just recently quit. You know what, but, though, man? I, I, got, I got to be honest. It's like I think what's great, because I had a partner before back in the day that I would do a different podcast with, and once I went solo, it's like, 
it's the best because you don't have yeah. to rely on meeting with someone. I mean, even your buddies that come on, it's you know, you guys, it's cool that you're that they're coming on, but it's like they're it's just there like for the, me to bounce stuff off of. Exactly, yeah. it's not like the Beatles where you're like, you know, like I need these four people, otherwise, you know, no, no, no. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, man, you know, it's it's the best. It's uh, yeah, um, it was that's that was a t- I agree. I, I I enjoy it much more just me. Um, not to say that I didn't enjoy it with Sarah, I totally did. Yeah, but it's it was a different thing. Um, and now it's I can focus on just the segments I want to do, and I can I don't have to worry about. Yeah, making somebody else happy. It's just me. How, how many do you, do you do it? How often do you do it? Once a we week? Do it, or, we we yeah. basically film every Tuesday, and they come out on Fridays. Um, yeah. The, the guy that I found this this guy another another miracle that I'm was meant another reason why I was meant to come home, and mm-hmm. why I know this will work. And I have a theory about why I think it's going to work too, like yeah. longevity. Um, so. When I came home and started asking around, like, who wants to help me film something? I went to high school with a guy who now has his own production company. He's been working. Wow. He's been making industrial videos, corporate videos. But he has all the same equipment and knowledge as anybody else in Los Angeles. I mean, he, I mean, he didn't go to film school, but, I mean, he did. He, he, he went to University of Chapel Hill, made straight A's. This guy's smarter than me. He knows how to edit stuff and put things together. And so I was like, hey, buddy, remember me? Why don't we, why don't we, why don't we team up and do something? And it was, it was easy. It was in-house. It was like I just had to walk in and, and, and start talking. Like he had the, light, the lights, all of it. And we've been uh, working together ever since. And his name is Alan Jackson. <laughs> wow so on the podcast i call him the alan jackson so people <laughs> will think it's the other alan jackson and we might get an extra <laughs> click <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious they um yeah. i knew a guy that had a comedy album and, and it's an introduction by dr dre and then i looked and this it was spelled differently it was just a guy who was you know <laughs> i was like that's, that's a smart th- so you know because my last name is carter uh, one of my comedy albums, someone told me I should call it The Carter, which I think Jay Z already has an album called The Carter. Oh, Somebody yeah, has, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, hey, that, that's, yeah. that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to deceive yeah. people into to, <laughs> to checking out the podcast. And then once they realize, oh, that's not what I thought it was, but hopefully yeah. they'll go, oh, yeah. but this is still good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, <laughs> listen, I have a <laughs> that's an old showbiz thing, right? Like I have a track on one of my comedy albums and it's called Cats in the Cradle and and it's uh it's because I'm ta- I'm talking about Cats in the Cradle, but you just want that one person to be like, "Oh, that's actually pretty funny." It's about, you know, but yeah. Oh, oh, I like, to, ooh, I like yeah. that song. Let me let me click on this. And they go, what, what, what is this? Too late. I not got paid. <laughs> Too late. Yeah, because that bit was about uh, uh, when my son was about five years old, we were watching the, the video of Cats in the Cradle. Uh, and, and in the video, you know, if you guys aren't familiar with the song, just go look it up because I, I don't want, yeah. want to explain it. But yeah, anyway, so, so the joke is I'm like, I'm watching this video and it's hitting me a whole new way because I'm a dad now and I'm starting to, it's really getting emotional. And uh, right at the pinnacle of the song, my my, and I go, my son comes over and starts bugging me. I'm like, dude, get away. <laughs> I want to see how this song ends. Gosh, you're so annoying. <laughs> right, get out of here. Yeah, yeah. So, I'll well, hang out with you later. <laughs> that's one of yeah. the best songs ever, too. Uh, that's funny. Um, yeah. Uh, now, uh, it's impossible for me not to cry when I hear that song now. It's it's amazing. I mean, there's all these songs. I mean, dude, especially at this time with like how everything has changed. It's like it's very... It's, it's yeah. every now and then you'll have that moment of just like, you know, and you'll, that song will hit you and it's just like, woo, you Dude, know, I stumbled on this video the other day. Uh, maybe you've seen it. Maybe you haven't. Um, and I don't know who the guy is, but it's like a, it's an African-American guy. He's probably like in his mid twenties and he might be a famous rapper. I just, I'm so out of the loop that I don't, I don't know who the guy is. Yeah. But he sits down and he puts his headphones on and he's at his desk at his office he goes, all right, everybody's been talking about um, Free Bird from Leonard Skinner. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's the best song ever written. I'm going to listen to it right now, uninterrupted, and just record myself, and, and, y'all, and y'all check out my reaction. Mm-hmm. And, and he gives it a shot, right? 
And about halfway into it, like you could see it just take over. Why it's like he goes, "Oh my god, this might be oh. the best song I've ever heard," and he's like jamming out. And it's a really great, like I loved it so much because you know it's two worlds. It's like this guy is going to try out this music. Maybe he thought he was going to make fun of it, but now he's been changed and he's turned. Um, and it's it's a really sweet, hilarious funny video you should check i think it out. i've seen that video they, there's like a series um where they where they do that where you would you would not ex- like people are like because you know what there's so much great music out there that that i've been rediscovering you know it's funny like uh when i think his name is harold reed i forgive me if i have the name wrong from the statler brothers when he passed okay. away um in the last month or so i was like i want to look up the statler brothers because all i know is that one song from pulp fiction Flowers on the wall, like <laughs> right, flowers right. on the wall. Yeah, and uh, I've been watching some of their videos at old school country harmonizing, and man, they have some really good songs. Which you know, you there's yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's a millions of people out there that have no idea how much great art has already been recorded. You know, right? It's already out there, and because maybe your parents listen to it, you all you kind of just wrote it off, but. Yeah. You know, when you get, get when you get older and you go back and go listen to it, you're like, oh wow, there was some actual powerful lyrics behind this stuff. Uh, yeah, I love it. I've always loved um, all types of music, um, but I remember as a kid, like I hated country for like because that's what everyone else listened to. Like I was all about, <laughs> you know, I like Prince. I like uh, rap, like r- my first album was Run DMC. Um, yeah, yeah. I used to be a break dancer, and that was, mine was that Beastie was, Boys. Yeah, oh, Beastie Be- Boys. Yeah, yeah License to that? Ill. License to Ill. Have you seen the documentary on uh, Apple uh, Apple TV? I didn't see it because I don't know if we have Apple TV. We probably do, but I just you know I haven't seen it yet. They yeah. they did a just the the two surviving guys came out and did a. It's like a one man show. Yeah, um, Ooh, nice. they did it in front of a live audience, and they come out and they give you the whole story on the Beastie Boys. It's really good. I highly recommend it. <laughs> Man, um, I'll I'll watch it. I uh, yeah. it's I funny. It's I'm on not Apple TV. It might be other places too. I uh. I don't watch a lot of television, you know, like I, uh, my wife pretty much like, she's like, I watch whatever she's watching or, but I, I don't really watch that much. I, I mainly spend my time going on YouTube to be honest with you. Cause there's so much, it's, it's yeah. like, it's like a la carte, right? Whatever you're into, you can just like, you know, I can't right. get the whole family to be like, Hey, you guys want to go down memory lane and watch the Statler brothers. And then we're going <laughs> to switch on over and, and, and look up toys I grew up with. I mean, they don't want to see that crap. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, you and know, my funny. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, now, now that I um, have moved back home, oh, wait, I got to tell you this. You're going to love this sentence as a comedian. I am now a 48-year-old divorced man who lives with his mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. now at night, like, um, me, it's just me and mom, and we've got two recliners, <clears throat> and we'll pull up TV. Awesome. But you got to find something that both people like because there yep. are things that I'm going to want to watch that I know she's not going to want. And she's going to watch Hallmark stuff, which I don't want to watch. But we've, we've, we, do, we do come in agreement about this. Um, we'll watch anything with numbers in it, like 60 minutes, 20, 20, 48 hours, that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we come together on that. But um, You're like, dang it, why couldn't it be called Tiger King 3 or something? Oh, <laughs> but we did, we did watch that together. We binged that thing. That was crazy. That was one of those things that everybody – because I'm usually not – and when everyone's like, you got to watch this, you got to watch this, I'm always like, you know, I'll wait like the third season before I watch Breaking Bad. And then I was like, oh, wow. Okay, I get yeah. it. But usually yeah. when they say you got to watch this, it's – it's usually something I'm like, eh. yeah. but that one was one that where I was like, wow, that was I definitely. Got, I, got, I watched it before everyone started talking about it, just at the very beginning of it. So luckily it didn't ruin. Sometimes that ruins stuff for me too. When yeah. everyone said, you should watch this, you should watch this. Like I, I'm like, don't tell me what to do. I'll watch it when I want to watch it. <laughs> uh, but, but I got there. I got that one on the beginning. Uh, oh, it's crazy. That was one of the craziest, craziest documentary series I've ever seen in my life. But I do love a good docuseries. Man. Well, John, listen, I, I want to get you back on, you know, and, and uh, if you'd love to come back on, uh, it'd be great to have you on the Pocket Party podcast. Uh, I, got a great, I got a great photo with us. And I was, I was thinking about that before you came on. I mean, you, you, uh, you know, you never know when, when you see somebody, you take that quick photo and then, and then uh, it's like, oh, man, yeah. they, it might be two years before you see him again, you know, but, but right. now we're telecommunicating. Well, I think that was we, that- you know, 
is that at the improv where I'm like hold h- hugging you? Yes. Yep. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. It was like, man, but I'm happy for you, man. You're, you're, uh, you're out there. It sounds like you're having a good time with your friends and family. And, and, uh, you know, it's not like you just threw a dart at a map and you're like, I'm going to move to that part of the country. You're like, you actually, you know, and I'm sure your family, everyone's happy to see you. And, uh, yeah. you know, we, um, during, during the, uh, lockdown, you know, uh, we, you know, my wife and I and, and son, we have family, we, we stay, we live in Burbank and, and we've got family in Glendale and, uh, I've got family down here too, but we were lucky enough to, you know, go up north about three hours north of LA. I grew up in Fresno. My wife grew up near Fresno and we, we you know, we've been spending time on a farm, you know, Oh wow! for the last couple months right now we're in LA, but like I would come down to LA for a couple of days and go back up there. So man, I nice. can kind of relate to that country living. There's nothing like, you know, when you, especially when you see the news and like, this is happening, that's happening. It's depressing. But you know, if you're out in the country, you can open your door and just kind of breathe in the the air and, and get your own yeah. mental health in the right spot. It's, you it's, know? it's you're a hundred percent right. And I picked the right time to come back, you know, like as a 20 something year old, when I grew up here, I'm like, I can't wait to get the hell out of this town. <laughs> um, but now I'm back. Um, it's a perfect place for me because it's not like it's only 45 minutes from a big city like Charlotte. It's a medium sized city. And I'm even like 10 minutes outside of the city of Hickory. So like anything I want, it's 10 minutes away. Um, But at the same time, the crap that's happening on the news, the scary stuff, that's also, that's, that's somewhere else. That's not here. So I, I feel pretty safe and, and, and happy with my friends. And thank you for having me on. And I'd like to get you on my, my podcast at some point. I got to get you to zoom in. Absolutely, man. I, uh, I figured out little by little, you know, uh, we talked about starting over and growing things. I, I figured out external microphones, webcams, and it's just going to keep growing, man. And, and yeah. uh, thanks for being a part of the Pocket Party Podcast. I'd love to sit in with you guys. And, and uh, man, keep having fun out there and keep being a light to the world and, and making everybody's day a lot better. John, I love you, man. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Love you too, buddy. Take care. We're done with this interview. So the other day I was standing in the kitchen and my son was like, dad, why did you write down that you weigh 190 pounds? I'm like, I, I never wrote that. And he goes, look, and he held up my driver's license. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> my wife goes, yeah, you're not supposed to put down your goal weight. You're supposed to put your actual weight. And then she looks at it again and she goes, and did you put your goal height? And I was like, I might've, I might've made myself look taller and thinner on my driver's license. And then my son starts breaking out into a song by Roy Orbison. Remember that? He was like, lying to the DMV. (laughs) Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching my YouTube video. And if you get a chance, watch one of these and subscribe. All right. Have a great day.